Okay, so this video is going to cover uh, sub D geometry in Rhino, and we're going to look at a couple different geometry types. This is all under the sub D tab in Rhino. So when you open up Rhino, you'll see this tab. Um, sub Ds are great for modeling geometry with a lot of curvature, and uh, there are ways that you can add or remove curves in it or edges in it to get more specific or to uh, create uh, kind of smoother shapes. So we'll cover some of the basic primitives uh, and then we'll cover a workflow that lets you work in Grasshopper with sub Ds as well. Um, so just like standard uh, geometry and with uh, solid geometry, there are primitives. So, for example, if you were to look at uh, a sub-D plane, when you click on that, it asks you the count. So how many in the X and Y direction? I'm going to say 4, enter, then click on this, say 4, maximize my perspective view. And this is what we get. So with a sub-D plane, you'll see that it has rounded edges. So Sub Ds are kind of a curved um, interpretation of a solid geometry. So you'll notice with this, I can click on it, I can move it. But on the right over here, there are these uh, selection filters. So with this, I can now I can play with this uh, patch. I can actually indicate, you know, this face of the um, of the sub D, I can actually manipulate that. So if I go to selection filter faces, and there's three primary um, selection types. You can select the edges, you can select faces, or you can select vertices. So that's all here in the top right. Um, I'm going to start with faces, and you'll notice that selection filter pops up. I like to dock this in the bottom of my toolbar here. And so you'll see that the um, sub D objects is checked and everything else is unchecked right now. But what this does is you'll see that surfaces faces are checked. So what I can do is I can select each face and I can manipulate it really easily. So let's say you're working on landscape project or you're designing architecture with a lot of curvature, this can be really helpful uh, for modeling that. Okay, so it allows you to model surface patches this way. Um, if we go to selection filter edges, you'll notice that curves edges is selected, but now surface faces is unselected. So I can only grab curves and edges right now, which if I wanted to manipulate those, I could do this. So you'll notice that I can manipulate the edges really easily. Let's say I wanted to grab this entire edge here. I double click on it and it'll, it'll grab that entire thing and I can move that continuously. Same thing in the other direction, I can double click and it'll try to grab the entire loop uh, of that geometry. So I can move this over. So you're seeing how, how simple it is to play with this geometry and um, kind of that workflow of working with um, sub Ds. Okay, so that's a simple plane. Um, you can also create a, a single sub D face. That's the first one here. Just simply by doing that, just creating a polyline and creating a sub D face from that. And so from this, we could also subdivide these as well. You're not just limited to the number of divisions that the primitive gave you. Um, we can subdivide the sub D, that's this one here. So when you click on that, and you click on the sub D and hit enter, it'll subdivide it based on how it, how it thinks uh, it should be subdivided. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I can click on that, click on the actual face, hit enter, and now you'll notice that this has a little bit more accuracy, right, because it's more um, articulated. We actually have more uh, control over that part of the sub D. So I can continue, you know, if I wanted to grab a whole section of this, 
I'm going to go back to my face selection, select all of these, and I can subdivide them. So now I have a little bit more control over this portion of the geometry. Um, let's say I wanted to manipulate this with a little bit more fidelity. I could do that. Now I have more control over the geometry on that side, whereas maybe over here I wanted this to be kind of more large sweeping shapes. You know, I can continue doing that here. All right, let's say I wanted a much smaller thing. All right, so this allows me to kind of add complexity to the project and to add fidelity to my geometry. Um, so there are other things we can do here, other primitives. So let's say sub D cone. And again, this will look like a rhino cone, primitive cone for as a B rep. But here, again, we have the ability to distort it, to play with it. Um, and this could be a really effective modeling technique if you're modeling, you know, characters or more uh, kind of curvilinear architecture. So cylinders, kind of the unique one that you'll see is the sub D sphere, which is somewhere between a, a cube and a sphere. It has more kind of cubic properties to it. And so let's say we're working with this and we, we say, well, I actually want a sharp edge along this entire top edge, whereas I want everything else to be rounded or maybe the, the inverse. Let's say I want a sharp edge along the bottom so that it can rest on a flat surface, but the rest of this I want curved. There's also a crease uh, command. So I could go to add crease and I could select these individually or I could double click I guess it doesn't grab the whole thing. I'm just double clicking around the bottom of it. So I have this loop or I have this complete edge that I've selected. And when I'm done, I hit enter and it'll give me a crease along those edges. Okay, so I've created a crease and this could be useful for modeling, whether it's, I mean, furniture design, industrial design, you could, you know, let's say you're modeling something ergonomic like a mouse. This could be a really effective tool, whereas not everything needs to be soft and fluffy. Some things can have a sharp edge, so that could be valuable. Um, if I, let's say I wanted to pull this up, what I could do is I could turn on the last one, which are vertices. And you'll notice, again, my selection filter goes to vertices. Everything else is unchecked. I can now grab the points, so I can grab that vertex and I can pull that up. So I'm making this bottom a little bit more flat. Another thing I can do, let's say I'm, I'm not happy with the curvature of this entire bottom. Um, I should be able to grab the edges. So now I'm going back to edges, select all of these. And I can manipulate these like I could any other geometry. So I could say project to C plane, delete inputs, yes. And so what it did is it just projected that to the C plane. So now those curves are perfectly flat with my C plane. And I have a completely flat bottom. So this object will rest on a flat surface. So you'll notice these edges I can manipulate and I can, you know, play with the gumball here. I can manipulate them the same way I could other rhino geometry. And again, I, I would, when you're modeling, make sure that when you create this, the primitive in the first place, before you start uh, clicking, look at the number of subdivisions it's going to generate. I put my command line in the bottom. Uh, but you can change the number of subdivisions. Let's say I want this to be eight. So this has a lot more complexity. Um, let's say I do this again, and I say two.
Okay, so the other thing that is pretty unique to sub D is um, the ability to go from curves to 3D geometry pretty easily. So I'm going to show you how to create a, a multi-pipe with uh, sub D. So I'm just going to draw a series of lines. So these are some lines, and I'm just going to do this kind of branching. I'll make these three-dimensional. So let's say this is this is the network of curves or lines that I want to use. I can click on this uh, create sub D multi pipe, and you'll see it's going to generate kind of a smoothed pipe among all of these curves. So it asks select curves to pipe, select these, hit enter. Then it asks for a set pipe radius. I'm just going to leave that at one. Cap ends off. Um, strut divisions one is fine and so you'll see the what it generates is a smooth version um, of those curves so it creates this kind of wishbone geometry which can be really useful you know imagine if you're designing a ergonomic bicycle or um, you know, if, if the architecture you're designing has this kind of geometry, it can be really effective as a modeling tool. And just like other sub-D geometry, you can edit this by turning on the selection filter. So I can go to faces, selection filter pops up. I can grab the faces that I want to edit and you know, I can manipulate this, I can move it, right? I can also subdivide it the same way I did earlier. All right, so now I have more control over individual uh, components. Okay. And so there's also a couple of um, so other methods that SubD introduces into Rhino that are actually pretty powerful. Um, there's the radiate SubD. So let's say we have a geometry here. I'm just going to use a SubD sphere. Uh, give it one subdivision. And uh, let's say I want to radiate this. Let's say I have a radial symmetry in my project. I can click Radiate uh, Sub D. It asks for the Sub D to radiate. The number of radial segments, so how many times do we want this to, uh, to radially uh, array? And I'll say six. And then it asks for the center. So where are we going to radiate this about? And I'm going to place it here. And you'll notice that it just created a radial array of that object. And what's interesting about this is that as I manipulate that original, it's going to manipulate all of the others in real time. So this will allow you to simulate something radial, and you can, you can test it. You can look at you know, different effects. I can play with this a little bit. Um, so this gives you some freedom to manipulate the original, and it'll show you the effect of manipulating all of them at once. So if you're modeling a turbine, or if your project has radial symmetry, this could be a really effective tool uh, to, to craft something like that. And you can edit any of these and it'll it'll manipulate all of them because they're all kind of uh, connected in that way. Um, now we, we'll save this because we'll get to this kind of at the at the la latter end of the presentation um, but there's there's other tools here that I wanted to show you. There's reflect a sub D geometry so let's say in a, instead of radial symmetry we want uh, linear symmetry, um, and let's say this is my 
I'll do a box here. So let's, let's say this is my geometry. And let's say I want symmetry down this axis. I can say reflect sub D geometry, select the geometry, and I'm going to draw a plane through which it's going to reflect it. Hit enter. And now I have this kind of merged geometry. And in the same way that I did radially, I can manipulate this and it'll mirror it as I'm working. So imagine if you're doing character animation and you're modeling a face or a body, you know, this could be a really effective tool um, in your workflow. So in architecture, we, we, you know, if we have any symmetry in the projects, this could be an effective technique for that. Right. I think of industrial design too. Imagine this is a, a seat or a mouse or a mouse pad. Like all of this could be very applicable for something like this. And again, let's say we want to add a crease to this. Let's say I like this geometry, but I want to create a crease along this edge. I can go back to the crease from mesh and I can select which edges I want to be creased. And doing that on one side will do it on the other. So now I have a sharp edge, then it goes back and kind of merges into being something smooth throughout. So I could do the same thing, crease, And you'll see that now I have a solid edge along this entire top. So this could be a good way to control the geometry you're working with, you know, whether for practical reasons or to give it kind of a solid ground. Um, this can be useful. Um, you can delete a face. So let's say I'm working and I delete a face. So let's say, whether intentionally or unintentionally, this gets deleted. So now I have an opening because this is a three-dimensional geometry. It's hollow on the inside. So now it's it has an opening and you'll see it has that opening on both sides, right? Because it's still being mirrored. Let's say I wanted to close this up. There's a command called fill sub D hole which just select the boundary edge. I'm gonna double click so that it connects the whole loop. Hit enter. It'll ask it um, what type of patch style. I'm gonna say automatic. Hit enter and then it just closes that up. Okay, so if you ever have an opening and you need to fill it, that's the way to, to go, is to go this uh, fill sub D hole command. Here's another interesting one. Um, it's called uh, the bridge mesh or bridge sub D. So here I'm gonna tr I'm gonna illustrate this by creating a couple planes. Uh, let's go with six and six. So creating two planes here. I'm gonna duplicate this and notice when I clicked it just grabbed that face. I want this to select the entire thing. So what I have to do is uncheck, uh, actually I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna disable my selection filter so that I can select this whole thing. Okay, so that's something that you'll have to do if you wanna select the whole sub D at once. And then I'm gonna hold down my alt and drag my Z direction of the gumball and move this up. So now I have two planes that are parallel and I'm gonna uncheck disable, go back to sub D objects, and with surface faces selected, I'm gonna go to the bridge meshes or sub D's command. And so I can select both faces. So I'm, I'm selecting two kind of parallel faces and then hitting enter. Actually, it asks me to select the first one enter and then I select the second one and hit enter and it's going to bridge the two so it'll do its best to create a tunnel between the two patches 
And here I can tell it the number of segments. So this will be the number of divisions within this kind of tree branch, tree trunk here. So I'm going to say two. You'll see that it becomes two, four. Now there's four subdivisions. Um, you can say creased if you want it to be a solid, you know, creased edge. I like the smoothed edge. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see that now I have a kind of a tunnel between those two planes. And so if if you're working on you know architecture that's more organic and you have curving columns this could be a really effective technique let's say we we only want this uh, kind of splayed top here but we want a creased bottom again i can go to crease and then just go all the way around and select every edge here okay so now i have a column with a splayed uh, top and let's say I wanted to manipulate this even further. I could scale it in both directions. I could scale it uh, 1.5 in that direction. I can go 1.5 in that direction. So now you're seeing this kind of splayed edge for the top. I could also scale the edge itself. One point five, one point five, and so now we have a much wider top here. Okay, so that's the bridge command, and and this could be you know between two planes. It could even be internally. So let's say I wanted to subdivide this geometry, subdivide that. I'll subdivide this one as well. And let's say I wanted to bridge between this patch and this patch. I could go to the bridge mesh, select one side, or actually, yeah, select first, hit enter, select the second, hit enter, and it's gonna create a bridge between the two. And again, this is being mirrored, so you're seeing it happen on both sides. But just to show that this can work on two sides of a solid geometry like this. Okay, so that's the bridge command. Um, we can set sub D per colors. Um, you can merge faces. So let's say I wanted to get rid of the subdivisions among these. I could select this. Select the edges, and now I have one, one patch among all of those. So it kind of deleted the edges between them, which now I can edit even further. Right, something like that. Um, there, there's another one that I wanted to show you. So this is extrude sub D. So yes, I could just take this face and pull it up, but there isn't as much uh, control over that. Let's say I wanted to create uh, more of an articulated extrusion. I can go to this extrude sub D command, click on that and hit enter. And what it's gonna do is actually pull up the geometry. Right now it's set the direction is free, but let's say I want this Z-based, so it'll pull it up. So it's gonna extrude vertically. Um, let's say I wanted to do that. So you'll notice when you extrude a face, it actually adds subdivisions. It's not just moving that face, it actually created all of these additional faces. So the extrude gives you a little bit more uh, fidelity when you're working. So again, the, dis the difference is here I select a face and just move it up versus I hit the extrude sub D, select, enter, set it to vertical. And you know you can see the difference between that. This one gives me subdivisions and I have more control. Whereas this one, there are no new subdivisions, just pulls that face up with the surfaces around it or the faces around it. Okay, and then there's also um, sweeps. You can create a, a rail from curves. Um, you can revolve, you can loft to create a sub D. So if I have 
two curves. And I wanted to loft these together to generate a sub D. I could do that. So select the curves. Oh, I'm still in surface faces here, so I have to go to edges, select both of these, hit enter. It's asking me for the number of subdivisions between them. Right now it's set to one. So let's see what happens when I hit four you'll notice that it has much more uh, control over that. It gives me more fidelity. I have a little bit more, uh, prog it's closer to that original curve. So if I were to do that again, select the two curves, um, I can change the number of subdivisions, let's say eight, and let's say I want corners. You'll notice those corners show up, creases, I can set it to be closed or not. Shape segments, I'm gonna say six. And so now I have a much more accurate sub D geometry based on a loft, the same way you would with a surface. But the difference is now I can manipulate this as a sub D. Okay, and then with sub Ds, you might be thinking, okay, now once I've modeled my geometry and I'm happy with it, what do I do after that? How do I work with this? So again, I would say disable your selection filter down here. So now you can select, uh, I'm gonna turn off sub D objects. So you can select this whole thing. So now I can grab this. There's ways that we can turn this into a mesh. So I can, select it, I can type mesh. What that's gonna do is it's gonna convert it from a sub D into a mesh geometry. And I can tell it how many uh, polygons I want. And the, the more polygons, the more uh, subdivisions that mesh will have. The more triangles, the more um, faces, vertices, and edges that, that mesh is gonna contain. And I can hit preview if I wanna see what it's gonna look like. That might be too many, so I can bring this down, hit preview, bring it down, hit preview. So let's say that's what I want. And maybe, for example, I want to 3D print this or something. I can hit OK. And now I have a mesh. You'll notice that I also have a sub D. So the mesh is something I can move over here. Now I have a mesh and my sub D shape. And within that, let's say I wanted to 3D print this, and right now it's it's just uh, it's just uh, kind of a plane. There's no thickness to this. Um, there are ways in Rhino uh, to create uh, kind of a thickened mesh. So there's offset sub D. So back here where I have my sub D, I can select the sub D I want hit enter, I can give it a distance, let's say 0.5. And again, I just click on distance in the command line here and hit 0.5. I want, I want it to be solid so that it'll 3D print. And I don't want both sides, the rest of this is fine. So I'll hit enter. And so you'll notice that it just thickened that sub D geometry. Now I have a thickened geometry. I could take this and I could mesh it as well. Again, I just type mesh. And if I preview that, let's say I want a little bit more uh, control. I want, I want the curvature to be a little bit more smooth because when you 3D print something or if you render something, you'll see those facets. So maybe I don't want to see those. So I'm going to add more polygons to it, preview it. Okay, I'm happy with that. Hit OK. And now you'll notice that my thickened sub D geometry is now a mesh and I can 3D print this or I can, you know, render it and it will, it'll have thickness and it'll have this nice curvature to it. So to just quickly do a Rhino render of this. 
you'll see that it's pretty smooth and, and it works as a geometry. Okay, so let's say we want, we, we like this uh, thickened geometry. I'm going to go back to shaded. Uh, we like this, but let's say we want to have uh, a beveled edge. I want this to be kind of filleted here. So there's a command for that. So bevel mesh or sub D. So I could do this to either a mesh or a sub D geometry. And it's asking for the mesh edge to bevel. And so I'm just going to select, I'm going to double click and select this entire edge because I want it to be rounded. So double click it, hit enter. It'll ask me the number of segments and it'll give me kind of a representation of what this will look like. Um, so I can set basically where I want that bevel to occur. If I click again, you'll see that it showed up here. It's not beveling on both sides the way I'd like, so I can do this again. Hit spacebar to repeat the command. It's asking for the edge. I double click on the edge. And segments, maybe I go with four. Weld angle in degrees, let's say 60. And uh, let's say retain shape now, offset mode. Let's go with proportional. Let me just see. Yeah, so. It is creating kind of a fillet here. Let's try um, let's try the sub D. So the same thing will work with a sub D shape. So bevel edge, double click. Actually, it's I'm gonna hide this. Select this one, sub bevel edge, grab that whole thing. And now you'll see this has a little bit more control. I think because this is all one, uh, one face, it's a little easier for me to control this. So I can do that. And now you'll see that this whole rail now has a beveled edge. I can do... Actually, this one's a little harder to do on that edge, but you'll see that now we have a beveled edge here. All right, and the same thing, I can select this and turn it into a mesh by hitting mesh. I could also turn it into a NURBS, which is a, um, a B-Rep or a poly surface. So I can select my sub D, hit convert object to NURBS, and it's going to create a basically a poly surface based on this. And so I can take that, so now I have a poly surface, which, you know, it depends on the way you like to work in Rhino. There's, these are the three different geometries, a mesh, a sub D, and a poly surface. Um, so you can convert back and forth through these. Okay, one other workflow I wanted to show is, let's say I wanted to merge these geometries together. Um, I wanted to kind of smooth merge them together. I can actually go into Grasshopper. Grasshopper, the latest versions of it, will have some sub-D tools that you can work with. So it makes the, that uh, pipeline into Grasshopper a little easier. So under Mesh, Actually, under Surface, you'll see um, a whole catalog of sub-D options here. Um, so you'll notice that you can, you know, just like in Rhino, you can say, you know, I want a mesh from a sub-D or a sub-D from a mesh. Uh, Multi-pipe, which we showed earlier. You can also fuse sub-D objects. 
So with this, if we look at what it does, it combines two sub-D objects, and it's asking for the first sub-D mesh and the second sub-D or mesh to be used. And then it asks what type of Boolean addition you want, union, intersection, uh, two equals A minus B, or three B minus A, right? So if I put in a different number, it'll give me the different calculation for each of those. And then it'll ask me for the number of smoothing steps to perform in order to get the get to the result. Um, so let's say I have uh, a couple boxes. So I'm going to have a box here, and I want another box here. And let's say I want to merge these two together so that instead of two objects, two sub-D shapes, they're just one, and they blend together. So this is the component I'm going to use, the sub-D fuse. I'm going to put in, um, it's asking for a sub-D or a mesh. So under params, under geometry, you'll see that uh, now they have a sub-D component. So I can bring that in. I'm going to control C, control V, drag each one in, and it's again asking for both sub-Ds. So I'm going to select one, right click, set one sub-D, select this one. Select the second, set one sub D, select the second, merge them together, uh, hide these. And right now it's set to, uh, let's see. So depending on the number, it's set to union. So right now it's zero. Um, it's kind of a strange outcome. Not really sure why it's doing that. Let me show selected, bring these back. That's a little better. So here, now you can see the kind of outcome. If I bake that, you'll see that it's kind of a blend between the two shapes. And so that's using the fuse command, the fuse component in Grasshopper. And again, the beauty of Grasshopper is I can move this around, test different iterations of it, and I can bake each one to give me each solution. All right, so if your architecture has blended geometry like this, or if you're creating a you know, you're working in industrial design, this could be a really useful component. Um, so this is uh, with union as the, as the number. So by default, it's set to union. So if I give it a number slider from zero to three, so I'll say zero uh, less than three, it gives me a number slider from zero to three. And I can plug that into O. So right now it's set to two, one. Yeah, so if I, if I bake that, it's going to show me a couple different iterations of that. This one's kind of twisting, so we don't like that. You can see it's, it's getting confused as to what's inside, what's outside over here. So I'm going to delete that but you can test the different geometries that it generates here. Still getting confused with inside and outside, so I would recommend just leaving this at one or at zero. And again, as you play with the geometry, you can get different outcomes. So maybe you're testing maybe a massing study and you wanna you know, test different ideas. This is the interesting kind of way to go. Okay, and then just like any other sub D shape, I can go back into face edit and I can edit any of these. 
as a sub D. And then let's say I want to convert this into a poly surface. I hit disable, uncheck sub D, select it, and go to convert object to NURBS. Hit enter, and now it's a poly surface. Okay. And with a poly surface, I can select this, I can hit explode, and it'll basically break it up into individual surfaces. So maybe you want that kind of control over your geometry. You want to be able to manipulate you know, some of these edges and planes. So those are a number of different workflows, but this will help you kind of get started in sub D.